Women in Journalism is a primarily a networking organisation for, as you might imagine, women in journalism, but it also runs regular events. It was set up by Eve Pollard, who was one of the very first female editors, you know, at a time when that was still really rare. It's now slightly less rare. We've got female editors of The Guardian, for example. But the idea was that actually there were a smaller number of women in Fleet Street than there were men, and it was Fleet Street back then, and they kind of all needed to stick together. So as it's evolved now, I'm now deputy chair of it. Eleanor Mills of the Sunday Times is now chair. Eve still sits on the advisory board. So what we try and do is a series of events throughout the year where women can meet up, and I think particularly for freelancers, and there are lots and lots of women who freelance, particularly after they've had children, and they appreciate the greater flexibility that brings. So actually getting to meet other people who do the same things as you is incredibly powerful because you kind of find out about what commissioning editors are like, you know, what rates are like, you know, who's looking for what kind of work. And building up those kind of alliances is really important. Plus you meet the kind of commissioning editors themselves. So that's part of what Women in Journalism does. Another part of it is running regular training courses. So that might be, you know, how to break into podcasting is one I did recently. You know, how to work in financial journalism, returning to work after having children, opportunities for women over 50 in journalism. All those kind of seminars and um, events and training kind of programmes. And getting to hear from women in the industry about stuff. That's part of what we do too. One of the best events that I went to from women journalism was a, a lunch we had where people talked about this idea about, you know, can you have it all? And, and actually effective strategies for dealing with negotiating, you know, your career and your future career. And that to me has been one of the most striking things. You know, I'm, I'm in my 30s now and there are lots of women in, um, in the organisation who are in their 50s and beyond. And actually hearing about how they negotiated those patterns is really useful to know. So, for example, someone said, well, look, when I had children, I had to go and become a foreign correspondent. That was the only way to make it work because you had that distance from the office. Someone else said, well, actually, my husband was the one who gave up his job when we adopted um, children. Other people had different strategies and, and, and talked about that. So those kind of bonds are really powerful because you can get the sense that, yes, there are big, big challenges, but there are people negotiating them and there are people who have done you know won over those challenges before and that we can learn from them so that's really useful i think and i think that's why we're having more women in, in the industry is really important because as soon as women's leadership becomes much more normal then you don't get seen as kind of a freak or an outlier or you know the kind of bitch from hell because you're in a in a powerful position it just becomes an organization where there are bosses some of whom are men and some of whom are women and that's you know there's a lot less sort of tension around gender issues then i think I think diversity in hiring is really important for a particular, well, for many reasons, not least to produce better journalism. Um, and I think if you have people in the conversation when stories are being developed, when commissioning is happening, when news priorities are being set, with a range of life experiences, that makes you better able to represent your readers. So, you know, I always feel in political journalism, until, you know, maybe even 10 years ago, certainly 20 years ago, something like childcare was seen as a kind of really niche issue. And then at the last election, it really wasn't, you know, both, uh, actually the last but one election particularly, David Cameron and Ed Miliband both had big pledges on about free childcare for under threes. And that was absolutely central to their campaign, and it was something that got reported on a lot, and it was seen as a big part of their electoral offer. I just don't think you would have seen that in elections in the 1970s and 1980s because most politicians would have been men, most lobby correspondents would have been men, and this was just not part of the fabric of their everyday lives. It was something that got taken care of by someone else. And actually having women in those organisations who have struggled to deal with childcare at the same time as having a job, suddenly they think, well, actually, if I feel like this, lots of other people do, and, you know, will as well, and lots of our readers will as well. So that's, I think, a huge, huge incentive to have more women in senior positions, simply because you're getting a better idea of the life experiences of the ordinary people who read your work and, you know, want to have a kind of connection with it and want to feel that their lives are being spoken about by you and what you do.